present my, our new work on new, verifi new schemes for verifiable delegation of quantum computation. So let me just start by introducing why do we need this problem. So first, let's assume that we live in a world that quantum computers can be implemented in practice and that they, they do uh, have more power, computational power than classical computers. So that's what Boaz Barak coined as the super world. So that's awesome. We can uh, solve problems that we could not do without quantum computers. But these computers are super expensive. And not every university or not every research institute would be able to, to buy them. So this, quantum, this, this computational power would be limited to, to very power, uh, like rich institutes, but not everyone could, uh, could afford it. But as IBM does today, we, we could uh, outsource our quantum, uh, quantum computation to, 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 take to the cloud. So we could send our quantum circuit. It would be run in this uh, quantum server, and we would have our answer back. But the question is, how can you guarantee that this server is running a quantum computation? So for, for some problems that are in NP, then it, it could be easy. You could just verify the solution. But for instance, if you were doing sampling, how can you guarantee that the sampling is being done from the right distribution? So ideally, what you'd like to do is have an interactive proof system for, let's say, for BQP, where, where the, the class of polynomial time quantum computation, where the verifier in this, in this interactive proof system is completely classical, and she delegates her quantum computation to a quantum server that in the honest case would really, uh, only need polynomial time quantum computation. And we'd like uh, th this protocol to be sound against any type of, uh, any, any malicious prover. So we'd like uh, statistical soundness. And ideally, the, the verifier should not have to release, uh, like, uh, to tell the prover what her secret is. So she wants to do it in a blind way. So this is the ideal world. We really don't know how to do it now. But we can relax the model. So one thing that we know, for instance, from classical complexity theory is that uh, BQP is in P space. So we have an interactive proof system where the prover is classical but exponential. Or for instance, we could give some limited quantum power to the verifier, and we have very efficient um, protocols in this setting. A third model would be, OK, we, we don't, we don't, maybe we don't need uh, uh, statistical soundness. We could have computational soundness, and that's fine for us. So in this recent work by Mahadev, she, she showed the first protocol in, in this setting. But in this talk, I'll, 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 um, I'll consider another model where we'll have the verifier that's classical. And this verifier is delegating quantum computation not to one, but to two servers. And these servers, they share some quantum correlation, but then they're not allowed to, to communicate anymore. So they, they are separated, and they're, all, all communication is, is cut between them. And the good thing for this model is that we, we do achieve uh, statistical soundness. So the, uh, in, the, in the no case, no, no kind of provers, no, no strategies of the provers would make the verifier accept with high probability. The downside of this, uh, of this model, like technologi uh, technologically, is that keeping entanglement, so keeping this quantum correlation, is somewhat challenging. But on the good side, all, this, all of this challenge is kept to the servers. So the verifier is completely classical. Whenever she wants to delegate, she can join the game because she just has a, a classical computer. So in 2002, uh, Reichert, Unger, and Vazirani, they solved this problem by proposing a protocol with two provers where they only need a polynomial resource to, to solve this question. So we think, OK, now we're done. But not if you see like, what's the polynomial. So if you want to delegate a, a quantum, computation, quantum computation with G gates, the complexity of the, uh, of the servers is G to the 8,000. So there, there has been a lot of work trying to improve this. But up to our work, the, like if you have only two provers, the best you could do is G2000. And in our work, OK, we're dealing with a delegation of quantum computation on n qubits, G gates, 
and the, the, these gates are, are on a circuit with depth D. And we, we, we are able to devise two protocols. In the first one, um, in both of them, the complexity is G log G, so it's almost optimal, so we cannot hope best than order of G. And in the first, of, of, uh, in the first protocol, the number of rounds is, is linear on the depth of the circuit, but it's blind. And then we can reduce the number, the, 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 uh, the rounds of communication in the protocol to constant, but, to, but at the cost of losing blindness. So comparing to, uh, to the previous results, we have a very good improvement uh, from, from, the, from them. And from the rest of this talk, OK, I'll review some basic notions on quantum computation. And then I'll try to explain uh, how, how do we achieve such uh, delegation protocols. So first concept in quantum information is what's the qubit. And a qubit is defined as a unit vector in C2. Uh, OK, so if you consider standard basis E0 and N1, so the vector is, is like V. But in quantum information, we inherit the notation from physics. So instead of having these as vectors, we call this cat 0 and cat 1 as a basis state, and usually cat psi or cat phi will be our, our qubits or quantum states in general. And again, it's this notation, so the, so the uh, psi would be like, uh, like cat psi would be a, a column vector, so the, the transpose would be a cat, the, 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 like the other way around, it would be a bra, and then the inner product is a bra cat. We have a qubit, and then how do we do computation on it? We apply unitary operations on it. So this doesn't have a lot of impact in our, in like in our results. So it's just that there, there is a way of doing computation on it. But what's very relevant is how do we do measurement? So how do you have the output of your, your, of your computation? And for instance, let's say, assume that I have a qubit psi, and then you can choose a basis on, on, on C2 in order to measure your output. And then your outcome will be B with priority phi B psi, like the, the, the inner product between phi B and psi. And most important, also very important, after you measure and you have this output B, your state that was psi, it collapses to phi B. So if you continue measuring, you always have phi B. So just uh, an example for those who have never seen it. So for instance, you have the plus state, it's the half, like superposition between 0 and 1. And if you measure in the computational basis, so in the canonical basis, you have each outcome with priority half, and after that you have um, you, you have uh, you, you continue like your, your state collapses to the to the to your measurement. But you could choose to measure it in the plus minus basis, and in this case you always so if you start with the state plus, you always uh, have plus with priority one as an outcome, and your state doesn't change. So another important, um, important concept in this talk would be entanglement. So an EPR pair is called this uh, two-qubit state 0, 0, plus 1, 1. And the, the important about this is that, uh, about the state, it, it cannot be written as a product of two states. So somehow, this state can only be seen as a whole, uh, as a whole state, and not as two, two parts. In particular, for every one-qubit state psi, this EPR pair can be written as psi psi plus psi perpendicular psi perpendicular. And in particular, if you measure the first qubit on any basis, then, um, then, you, know, like, uh, then you know what's the measured state, like what's the post-measured state on, on, the second, uh, on the second part as well. So this allows us, like in this two-prover setting, to somehow steer what's, what's the, the state on, on, on the other prover for any basis. And this is one of the main sources of quantum correlations. So let's see a bit more. Oh, OK, sorry. Um, so how, how our protocol works? So we're based on a protocol that's uh, proposed by Broadbent, where we have a semi-classical verifier. So the verifier is a bit quantum, because the verifier and the prover, they share a bunch of these EPR pairs. And then Broadband proposed this protocol where the verifier just sends random coins to the prover. The prover answers, like the prover does his magic, answers with some value C, 
and then the verifier just chooses some uh, some basis, some 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 uh, some basis to measure uh, her shares of PR pairs. And uh, okay, what to be important technically to the SOC is that the, uh, all these measurements are one qubit uh, Clifford observables. So it's very technical, but uh, th that, that was the hard technical part that we had to prove in our in our result. And then the idea is that the verifier chooses these measurements that she does in a way that either she'll be testing the prover or she's helping the prover to do the computation. And the idea is if, if the prover passes the test, then he was not cheating, so she can, she can detect that he, the prover is not malicious. And in this case, oh, OK, yeah. And, and, and then in this case, when, when she decided to do the computation, uh, she has the right uh, output. And in our result, what we do, okay, we, we start from this protocol where you have this quantum verifier, and we want to make our verifier classical by delegating the verifier of the first protocol to a second prover. So now we have two provers, PV and PP, and the verifier will help them uh, the, uh, run the original protocol where the verifier was also quantum. And suppose for a moment that PV is honest in this second protocol, then we could merge V and PV, V prime and PV, and then we're back to the first protocol. Then our protocol would be sound. The problem is, how can you test PV? So how can you assume, how, how can you enforce PV to do the honest part, to the honest strategy? And then we go to non-local games. So a non uh, two-prover ga uh, non-local game it's a game where you have a verifier that asks questions to the provers who, who, who cannot communicate, and then these provers answer back with some, some answers, and the verifier proceeds some check. For instance, the, uh, a famous game is the CHSH game, where the verifier just sends random bits to the provers, the provers answer, answer some values A and B, and the provers pass the test if and only if uh, the multiplication of the, the, of the questions is equal to the sum of the answers. Or in other words, they pass the test if the parity of the answers is one, if and only if both questions are one. And if you think a little bit, you, you, you see that class, if they only share classical randomness, the provers cannot pass this test with probability more than, uh, more, uh, more than three fourths. However, it, it was shown that with, if they, these provers, uh, that there is a quantum strategy for such provers, that they pass it with probability strictly bigger than three fourths. So quantum communication will allow them to solve this problem um, with higher probability. So this is a strategy. Uh, it's not very important why, what it specifically it is, but what is important is that what has been shown for this for this uh, for this type of game is that if you have two provers that pass this test with probability very close to the optimal one, then the strategy that they're doing is exactly this. No, not exactly, it's, it's close to this. But they, they, cannot, they could not be doing something else and ach uh, achieve such probability, acceptance probability. So this allows us to somehow, uh, uh, fr from this test, we can characterize exactly what, their provers, what the provers are doing. So technically, what, 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 uh, what, what we need to do then is to have a, a non-local game that allows us to, to do this, the same type of arguments for one qubit Cliffords. Remember, these are the, 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 the observables that the quantum, verifier, or the, the quantum verifier was doing in broadband's protocol. So such a game would help us test PV in our new protocol. And in this non-local game, the, the provers should share MEPR pairs and, uh, and just uh, perform the correct measurement on, on them. Then we're able to show that, okay, this, um, this honest strategy passed probability exponentially close to one. And most important, we have the rigidity theorem that shows that any strategy that passes probability one minus epsilon is square root of epsilon close to the optimal one, to the, to the honest one. Then what our protocol is, with some probability, the verifier makes the two provers uh, play this, uh, our non-local game, this non-local game. And with probability one minus p, 
the verifier makes the prover simulate broadband's protocol. And the idea is that for, uh, for, uh, from the perspective of PV, uh, he cannot distinguish which of these two tests are being done. In this case, when you're doing the non-local game, we can somehow bootstrap the, the, like, uh, the, the strategy and say that the, prover, the, the PV is being honest. And once that you know that PV is honest, then you can test PP. And, then e and if PP is also honest by the second test, then we know that they are performing the correct computation w when v, v prime decides to do it. So here is another way of seeing it. So we have this rigidity Clifford test that, that self-tests PV and PP when, you, 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 when they pass this test with high probability. And then f on the, uh, from PV perspective, uh, he will be honest in all of, the, uh, all of the rounds. And then from this, you can, we can prove that if they pass uh, the other test with high probability, then they are doing the correct computation at the end of the day. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so in this protocol, we need order of the um, uh, communication uh, rounds of communication in order to achieve soundness. And then in the, in the dog, uh, dog walk protocol, we actually what we do we tell PV what the circuit is, and we ask PV to be exactly the honest pro the, 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 the verifier in broadband's protocol. So he has much more power. And, but more power, more responsibility. So we also have to test if knowing Q wouldn't allow PV to, to, to cheat more. So we, he, he couldn't have some strategy that would fool the verifier. So we have a much more complicated uh, set of leashes here. So that's why we call it a dog walker protocol. Uh, and for this, we need to somehow strengthen our rigidity theorem for uh, adding some tomography there. Uh, some open problems that we leave is that, okay, can, can you have uh, one round uh, schemes that use almost linear resources? So this is still open. Also, can you have blind protocols that have constant round, uh, constant round uh, complexity? And finally, towards our ideal world, can you have protocols where, okay, the verifier delegates her quantum computation to two provers, but now the provers, they are quantum computers, but they are not in, in the honest strategy, they're not entangled. Somehow you, should be able, you could be able, I don't know, to, to use one prover to test the second one or something like this, but that, I think that would be a very, um, that, that would be a, a step towards the ideal world. And thanks for our attention. Any questions? Uh, so in these tests that you have uh, as a basic construct, so when you when you send X and Y and then you receive A and B, uh -huh. so um, I mean, are they? I'm I'm am wondering if they are somehow related to the to the actual computation that you want to compute, or they are not? They're just random tests. So they're not related to the circuit that you want to compute somehow, or are no, they? No, no, they are totally uh, unrelated. It's just to test if the somehow it's just to test the strategy, because then. The optimal strategy, so what's related is that okay, yeah. uh, it's not related like to the computation, but some, uh, you see this, this honest strategy, we are interested in this X and Z. So, so this is, okay, in an obfuscated way, is uh, what is the basis of the measurement that the, that the provers are doing. So somehow we can if they pass this game that's independent of the, t uh, 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 of the computation, somehow we have some guarantees on the measurements that they're doing. The, I, then then I, I don't see how the, the two prov so the, tr the two provers, they don't, ah, so they cannot, I, so you, there is some trust there, then I don't they, see They how, don't communicate, yeah. But how do you trust that they execute the right computation? I don't get that. Oh, okay, uh, it's... Because that's... Uh, no, so, that's so that, that comes from actually, I, I didn't say much about this. This comes from broadband's protocol. Yes, so but, broadband's uh, protocol yes, but they might not execute the broad. So you have to actually check that they are 
executing that protocol for the right computation. So, I don't so, so this comes from Broadband's protocol. So in her protocol, she uh, uh, somehow the verifier tests if the right computation has been done. So in, in the second part, so in this, uh, the computation in the second part is a the original protocol. These, uh, the, the verifier is exactly checking if they're doing the right computation, one of the steps. So the, 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 and the entanglement pairs and everything, so they are pairs just because there are two provers, but if you'd have three provers, you need like a bigger entangled state or So, yeah, yes, uh, but then it's trickier because uh, as Zvika was saying about monogamy, monogamy of entanglement, you could not have three partite uh, EPR pairs, so then it becomes a bit more tricky. Okay, well, let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm.